You touched on Adrian Flock visiting you. Adrian Flock visiting yeah. you. What are your thoughts of the the Adrian Flock today who's kind of changed? Well, if it's a genuine conversion, welcome. You know, I didn't go to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I could have. Um, my attitude was, you take up arms, you're lucky to get away with your life. Uh, what was I going to complain about? That they were harsh with me? That they had no sense of justice? That's why we tried to overthrow them. So why do I expect justice from people who system is fundamentally unjust? Uh, what have I got to complain about? I've survived. Uh, and there are people who went through much worse. Uh, I had a roof over my head. I got three meals a day. I was able to write letters. I was able to study continuously. So, uh, I have a photograph there taken by Jürgen Schadeberg of walking in the stone quarry on Robben Island with Nelson Mandela and the Ravonia comrades. And uh, on that occasion, I said to him, Nell, you've been talking to the press all day, and when you tell prison stories, you do what I do. You tell a very sad story, but it ends with a hopeful twist in the tale, so there's a bit of a laugh, and we're all great heroes, you see. But there were some guards who were brutal in their behavior, and who traumatized many people. Sometimes you need to show some anger for them, because they don't meet the press. You need to show anger sometimes, not all the time, just sometimes. And Nelson stops. Nobody criticizes Nelson, you know. And he says, well, comrades, you heard Dennis. What, what do you think? Everybody waits for Tato Walter to answer, because and he says, oh, Dennis, we won, don't be bitter. And I say, but what? I'm not bitter, I'm angry. It's a different emotion. And we cannot allow prison guards to traumatize people in future. That's what I'm talking about. That's why some anger. Then we meet the press. They haven't heard a word, they're all around the edge of the quarry, but they can see there's a dispute, you see. So what was going on? Cha, 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 cha. Is there disunity? <laughs> <laughs> and then Nelson comes to his inaugural speech, just a few months later. And he says, never, never, and never again will we allow one to dominate over another in, as in the past. Let freedom reign. He has this knack with words. But when he said that with such firmness, never, never, and I felt justified. I felt vindicated. Whether I brought him to it or not, I don't know. But that's what he was expressing, the very emotion. You cannot allow this kind of brutal domination. And I'm afraid we've still got a battle over that. So how does this story relate to the question on Adrian Flock? How does this relate to Adrian Flock? Because Adrian Flock was party to all the brutality and the uh, flew in and out of Mozambique. He helped Renamo, tried to destabilize that government. He played a role of support for the very things I'm talking about. And so, what do I feel about Adrian Flock? Yes, he washed Frank Chicana's feet. He was party to the attempt to poison Frank Chicani. What a theatrical gesture. Is it sincere? I hope so. But I said to you earlier, I didn't go to the Truth Commission. I don't feel the need to attack any individual. I cannot, could not expect justice from an unjust system. I agreed with the policy of Truth and Reconciliation we need to draw a line and get on and rebuild our country. On the other hand, I agree with former President Thabo Mbeki, 
we can't talk reconciliation till we've really transformed our country and we've at least broken the back of poverty, that people live in decent conditions. And we're not doing it quick enough. So where does Adrian Flock fit in? It's about time that more politicians of that era recognize their own moral responsibility for what happened instead of pretending that it was all just an unfortunate experiment that failed because it was a brutal system of inhumanity. Laws that broke up families, migrant labor, children growing up without their fathers by law because if a man went to work in the city, he couldn't take his family by law. And you call yourselves human beings, religious, and uh, it's about time. It's about time. And my personal belief is it would go a long way if people of that era would say, we did what we did or we were apathetic and let it happen and terrible things happened. Don't have to say sorry. Just we're aware of what happened and how bad it was. I think it would transform our politics. Dennis Goldberg, just quickly in closing, you have in the discussion have found space to laugh when you think about really terrible things that happened in your life. Is that a natural thing, do you think? It's a self-defense. It's a way of pushing it away. Of sometimes mocking our own seriousness, of having time to laugh and enjoy. And today, if you look around my home, you'll see it's filled with most beautiful works of art, most of it describing in artistic form our new South Africa works by artists who were never considered to be worthy of being called artists, about people who were never thought to be worthy of being painted or represented in art, farm workers, farm laborers, fishermen, just ordinary people, a man writing a diary, he's not toy toying, he's not at a funeral, he's not at a political meeting, he's just being an intellectual. I have not seen such portraits, happens to be a good portrait, a couple madly in love or lusting for each other if they're not in love. I mean, I, I've got room for this in my life. And um, let's say that, recall that when we were sentenced to life in prison, my mother called out, what is it, what is it? Because she couldn't hear the judge, he spoke so softly. And I said, it's life. And life's wonderful. And it is, you know. So why not laugh? Why not enjoy it? How would you like future generations, future South Africans, to remember you? Me? Oh, well, as just a guy who tried to play a role for justice, because that's essential. Because I believe that to be human is to serve the needs of others not for reward, but because human solidarity is what makes us human. I didn't know it's called Ubuntu until long after I'd been practicing this all my life. Uh, but in addition to that, I've set up, I'm in the process with the help of some Half Bay people, setting up a trust fund called the Dennis Goldberg Legacy Foundation Trust, which will take over my art collection as a basis for an art and culture center for skills training and education in art and culture for the people of Hart Bay and Cape Town. That's my legacy. And uh, I find much more fun out of supporting social projects like a music project, like a psychology training center, Uberbele in Johannesburg, Good Hope Psychological Services in the Western Cape. Uh, uh, science bus in Medunza, uh, various things through my charity Community Heart that I set up in England and Germany. Because these social projects are quick to move on their feet. We've 
funded rape crisis Cape Town. They've had at least 16 million through us, rands. We've shipped in 3 million books for children. Uh, 3 million books, 50 rands of books, 150 million rands worth of books. Didn't cost us that, they donated. Uh, the music project, the 150 young people make music together. You talk social cohesion, we've been doing it for years. Didn't need the Ministry of Arts and Culture to say build so social cohesion. We do it, you see. Uh, so what do I want to be remembered for? A fairly ordinary guy who got caught up in something big and enjoyed it, was tough, but have survived. I have grandchildren who are beautiful, who care about me, and a son who cares about me, and friends all over the world. What more do I want? Uh, a kiss to build a dream on. <laughs>